The state television company Western Armenia represents the most important news for today. Good day. Today's broadcast. The 27th meeting of the Council of Ministers of the Republic of Western Armenia. Many questions of the families affected by fuel explosion in Artsakh remain unanswered. After the publication of the articles on the monasteries of Artsakh, the Vatican started an investigation, Sputnik Armenia. The offsprings of Western Armenia, Zaper Yesayan. Charles Navur's monument will be opened in Yerevan. Young people preserve cultural heritage with their new performances of old song. On 20 August, the 27th session of the Governing Council of the Republic of Western Armenia was held. The session started with the welcome speech of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosian. The President spoke about the importance of natural resources, emphasizing their vital importance for the Armenian people and added that it is necessary to develop and strengthen it. Ms. President once again reminded of the coming event to be held on 8 September related to the summer university. At the meeting, the guests invited to attend the event were also discussed. Ms. President offered to send an official letter to the mayor of Lyon to attend the event. At the end of the session, organizational issues of the scientific conference dedicated to Goddess Anahit, scheduled for September 15, were also discussed. The families affected by the gasoline explosion in Stepanagar don't have any status so far. They demand to clarify their status and solve their problems accordingly. The relatives regularly apply to relevant authorities of Eastern Armenia, but so far there has been no positive progress. They consider it impossible to take advantage of the housing program of the government of Eastern Armenia and demand a separate approach to such families. These and similar families in Eastern Armenia face many problems and they feel alone and neglected, while they should be under the care of the state. At the end of July, the Vatican's official newspaper, L'Osservatore Romano, published articles about the temples of Artsakh, which were attributed to Albanian history and Azerbaijani names. According to one of the Italian bloggers, the Vatican administration has started an investigation due to the fact of publishing two articles about the old Albania monasteries of Artsakh in its official newspaper. The Vatican's official newspaper, L'Osservatore Romano, published the article in late July. They talk about the Divang, Ganzasar, without mentioning their belonging to Armenian culture. Moreover, in the article they were mentioned with Azerbaijani names. Nothing is said about the many facts of the destruction of Armenian churches and Hajkars in Artsakh during the last four years. Moreover, Karabakh was not called by the internationally recognized name, but Karabakh. A week later, L'Osservatore Romano published a response article by Archbishop Hajak Parsamian, the official representative of the Major Chief Holy H. Miazin in Vatican. He drew attention to the fact that the history of both the Armenian and Albanian churches were distorted in the articles of July 24. This was followed by a statement from Vatican monk Claudia Cugerotti on relation with the Eastern churches, stating that the mentioned articles don't reflect the opinion of the official Vatican. An internal investigation was then launched to find out under what circumstances these articles appeared in the press. The most beautiful and magnificent among the heritage from ancestors to us is our language. We must preserve it with patience, excitement, and enthusiasm. Zapel Yesayam was the most important female representative of the Armenian blossoming period and had an exceptional role in new thinking in Armenian society. Zapel Yesayam was born in Constantinople and received a comprehensive education due to her father, who took a huge importance of education. It should be noted that such a position towards girls was rare in those times. Zapel was the only female member of the Young Turk list of Armenian intellectuals to be arrested on April 24, 1915, and this is evidence of the great influence she had as a writer and intellectual. She managed to escape and reach the Caucasus and then to Paris, where she settled, becoming a communist. Years later, being invited to Soviet Armenia, she decided to settle there permanently. Zapel Yesayan often called a feminist by modern literary critics, but she denied that qualification. According to her, her main concern was social injustice related to women as well. Although Zabel was able to escape the genocide against the Armenians, she became a victim of another evil that befell her, Stalin's repressions. 
Like many of her contemporaries, she was accused of espionage, arrested and died under unknown circumstances. The preparing works of the monument of Charles Lanznavour have been carried out and the contract has been signed with the sculptor already. The works of the preparation of the monument will entirely be carried out at the expense of Yerevan's municipality locations. Gur Sarkisyan, the head of the culture and tourism department, said this during the procedural meeting of the Yerevan municipality. The opening of the monument is planned on 22 May 2025 as the final ceremony of the event dedicated to the 100th anniversary of the great chansonnier spirit. He said, the Gran Avignon, mayor of Yerevan, responded that in 2025 the community should make greater efforts to have new modern sculptures. A right initiation should be for them by also including financial lines in the budget. With the financial support of the Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Sports of Eastern Armenia, the NGO Sevan Youth Club implemented the update program, which was aimed at the preservation, viability and transmission of the intangible cultural heritage of the coastal communities of the basin of Lake Sevan. Most of the performers are descendants of the people of Mush, who have brought the nation music they heard from their elders to our days. During the successive stages of the project, the songs were notated, developed, arranged and recorded with the advice of professional musicians. This continuous chain of protection of intangible cultural heritage was summarized by a concert touring the Kunik region, during which local folk songs were played and publicized with the participation of local musicians and the recording of the Gamma Band. The concert took place in Gavar, Martuni, Vartenis and Sevan communities of Gerar Kunik region to give a joy to the cultural life of communities and ensuring the vitality and continuity of forgotten intangible cultural heritage through new interpretations of old songs. This was all for today. Goodbye.